you're listening to Devo Talks. In this episode, the key to communication has always been the same, is listening. If you want to understand the need of a prospect or a customer, ask open-end questions about his challenges. Hello everyone, my name is Yann Lamasson and you're listening to Devo Talks, the show devoted to sharing the latest advances, ideas, and trends in the world of business, technology, and cybersecurity. Today I'm excited to share with you an interview I did recently on the topic of soft skills and emotional intelligence with conference speaker Benoit Chalifou. In today's show, you'll learn what these skills are all about and how you can master them so that you can win in every aspect of your life. My guest Benoit is no stranger to the topic of soft skills. He's an internationally sought out speaker on motivation, sales, and cross-cultural management in the world of business in Canada, Africa, and Europe. He currently holds a position on the management faculty at the University of Quebec in Montreal and is also the Deputy Director of International Affairs. Over the years, Benoit has developed over 80 partnership agreements with the world's most prestigious universities while also maintaining his passion for encouraging and supporting various startups. He holds an executive master's in business from the University of Paris, Dauphine, as well as a BAA and MBA from the University of Quebec in Montreal. So whether you're at home or at work or on the road, I encourage you to listen with an open mind along with your favorite cup of coffee or tea and enjoy the show. Well, everyone, thank you guys so much for joining us on another Devo Talks. And today I'm pleased to have Benoit in the studio with us. Thank you. Thanks for coming along. And uh, the way I got to know Benoit a little bit was uh, he came and did a uh, uh, kind of like a motivational talk to our team here. And it was very encouraging. I, I had a lot of uh, takeaways from it. Thanks. And I thought it was uh, just very helpful. And I thought that you guys would love to hear a little bit about some of his story, his background, and a little bit about some of his passion. Mm. Uh, so we're going to be talking about soft skills a little yeah. bit. And he'll kind of explain because at first I wasn't <laughs> too sure what it was. You know? uh-huh. But um, anyway, before we get into the, actually the, the meat of it, I just wanted to ask Benoit, first of all, give us a little bit about your story, because I know you had a background in soccer. Yeah, that's true. And if some people listen from uh, Europe, it would be more about like football, right? Yeah, yeah foot. Yeah, uh, yeah the a... foot, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my, my background is uh, I was extremely passionate, uh, extremely passionate about soccer uh, as I grew up. As a matter of fact, it was it was always my dream to becoming a, a professional soccer player, sure. right? And then I did my, you know, I graduated from a, a university in Montreal and I play varsity sport, soccer and this and that. But my, my journey was always like more focusing on sport than studying, right? But I was very good at school because uh, because of sport, right? Mm-hmm. That, that yeah. was really my school. Yeah. Uh, self-discipline, this is where I self-motivate myself and it replicated in everything. And then one day after I graduate, I was like... I'm going to chase that dream. Sure. So I actually pretend to my parents that I had some specific agent taking great care of me and they would send me to Morocco. That was my first trip, which was all a lie. I mean, <laughs> uh, so I didn't have nobody waiting for me at the airport. Wow. I was just by my own. I had just a few bucks. Yeah. Uh, pretending that people would take great care of my, uh, me, which th- was not the case. And I fell. Oh. I fell big time in Morocco. Then I did some tryout in Tunisia. Mm. And then I did some tryout in Dubai, went pretty good. And then I went, I flew to uh, Portugal. Okay. And then I had like some sort of, you know, assumption that it might work because I had great tryout. I did my best, like, performance so I was really excited about this and at a certain point I was pushing myself so much that uh, in in a practice I, I turned my labrum oh. which is part of your hip yeah and I went I went to the sp- some specific doctor in US and this and that and everybody told me that your your career is over oh. before it, it, it actually started yeah. but I was so close and this is where I found that this is a specific interesting insight is that um, 
you know, you could be extremely passionate about something, but if your talent doesn't follow that. Mm. So I just think I was an, a very good uh, amateur, uh, you know, uh, how you, would you say that? Like, uh, not professional, but at sure, the, yeah. uh, you know, at the just amateur level, yeah. I was an okay player. I was a good player. Yeah. But at the professional level, I think I missed some talent. So sometimes you need to understand that. Otherwise, you could, you know, enter yourself yeah, exactly. because you're pushing sure. your limit. Sure. Right. And this is where I actually pivot and becoming uh, what we're uh, actually about to talk about. That's amazing. That's it. So after that that life changing moment, you know, there was a there was a kind of a direction change, right? Mm. So did you uh, go back to school after that, or uh, how how did it? Yeah, continue? That, no, actually, I was l really lucky. I really trust life. You yeah. know, you do stuff, and you know, you launch it to the universe, and it's always come back sure. for some reason yeah. and so I um, no I actually bump into some school for a position a very random position mm -hmm. and then I I did my stuff and then we I move on and then I becoming a lecturer I becoming a, 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 a actual a manager of international affair then a deputy director of international affair I was negotiating agreement uh, throughout the world wow. uh, with the best business school I was traveling a lot and then I discovered that passion that was already inside of me about people. Sure. Uh, I was always curious about people that were different. My friend were, would always be people from different country, different background, and I would, you know, uh, so I would be obsessed about learning more about their own culture and this and that. And this is where I discover um, that to have a better self-aware of yourself, uh, you should be obsessed about adversity, about people that are different because you learn from them about yourself as well. Yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, the, the, the story of me be, being a keynote speaker was that one day, mm. uh, as I was working at the business school, that I'm still working at right now, um, some professor, one friend of mine says, you need to save my life. I was like, why? <laughs> he called me on a Sunday, he says, Sure. On Monday, there's a conference in Toronto and, you know, my speaker just canceled his presence. I was like, what do you mean? He says he was not able to take his visa, right? I was like, well, it's tomorrow. It's in Toronto or in Montreal. What are, what are you talking about? Mm. He says, how can I save your life? He says, well, you're good with people. I said, first of all, it's in English. Yeah. Second of all, I never did a, a talk before. And you asked me to be kind of a sort of a speaker sure. what are you talking about he says you're good in public i said i never done that before <laughs> and then he says and you're good with human and the, the topic was like to talk with people from this high tea background geek person very mm. focusing on their computer this and that yeah. to open to people and <laughs> you know i was like yeah i understand that but mm. man and you know what i i said well let me think about it and then I talk with my wife and she's like, come on, man, you got to do that. Sure. So, and this is where I discovered that facing adversity is, a, is sometimes an occasion to find a hidden talent, mm. uh, a hidden opportunity, yeah. or fail. Yeah, that's but true. as you fail, you learn. Exactly. And the, the, what happened was that I actually had great feedback. <laughs> that's cool. And it, it was nothing as... You were exposed at Devolution. Yeah, sure, yeah. It has nothing to do. I mean, it was my first one. I, I, I did many mistakes. But the feedback, the early feedback was so good that some people were like, oh, I want you to, to be in my company oh, yeah. uh, next <laughs> month. I was like, oh, okay. And then it just, you know, flow like this. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I yeah. think it's it's uh, it goes back to it's not what you know, but who you know. Yeah, uh, so for probably sure. people along the journey that saw a potential or something, you know. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's so cool. That's yeah, so cool. that yeah, that's why you need to find some mentor in your surrounding yeah, and entertaining that relationship. These people are gonna push you somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, so then you started talking about <clears throat> the the human aspect of a. Sometimes very, un, like we'll say, an like inhuman job. You know, you're working with computers, developers, yeah. IT people. A lot of times we're working with machines, you know. Um, and uh, it's a necessary part of life, right? The computers in, 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 are part of everything. But there's sometimes there's that missing component on, in a team, in a, in a business, in an organization, on a staff level. A lot of us went to college or school or university for a hard skill, mm. right? We learn about yeah. how to 
whatever it might be, you know, whether you're in business or not, you know, lots of people listening to us. We've got yeah. business professionals, uh, CEOs, my, my mom and dad are probably watching right now. So, but uh, the idea is what, what's the importance of a soft skill yeah. and why do we need that? Well, first of all, I would say we hire for hard skill and then we fire for soft skill oh, because yeah. they don't have, they lack soft skills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's true everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I had the opportunity of delivering a lot of talk in IT company uh, because I think soft skill resonate with them a lot uh, because they understand the value of it, especially in a tech company mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons, you know, with artificial intelligence that's booming, with internet of thing, with big data, uh, with uh, virtual reality. Um, the word get complex, there's a lot of ambiguity, uh, uncertainty, sure. uh, volatility, and all of these things um, made the soft skills kind of the solution. Sure. Because you need to navigate in this uh, a vision onward, right? Having a vision has a lot to do with soft skills, mm. right? Communicating your vision, having a vision, need to be brainstormed, sure. right? And then having a vision, then you need also to be a great listener, a uh, great listener to your ecosystem. Mm. Your competitor has to be your best friend. Yeah. Because I, I really believe we will talk less and less about competition mm. and more and more about collaboration. Ah, wow, that's true. Uh, then we, we, we talk about creativity. Creativity is a very, 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 very tiny, small gesture, but all the time that made the whole difference, right? Being creative in the way you talk with your people and the, the way you empower people, the way you're offering services to people, right? So it's very important. And of course, being able um, to adapt yourself because it's really about adapting yourself before your competitor today. Sure. Yeah. And adaptation, you know, being able to adapt has a lot to do with soft skills. Hmm. If we had to boil down the idea of um, somebody's listening to us on the podcast mm. or watching us on YouTube right now. What are some things that we can maybe do personally to attain or to practice soft skills? So maybe, uh, maybe they'll be lucky and they'll have somebody come and talk to them about uh -huh. it. But what if they don't and they got to They're the only ones, yeah. you know. What what can they do um, to to inherently develop soft skills in their own lives? First of all, let, 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 let's just explain what's the difference, because a lot of people are confused today. Sure. Uh, you know, what's the difference between emotional intelligence and soft skills? Yeah, yeah. And I would, I would say, just, just to explain it in a very uh, broader sense, uh, emotional intelligence is your toolbox, right? Okay. But then you need to have some, you know, to, to have some tools in, in the toolbox. So, so, so the soft skills are all of the skills that, well, slash uh, tools that you need. Uh, so the emotional intelligence is your toolbox and then each skills uh, is one of, uh, of the, the most important thing that are part of your toolbox. Mm. So let, let, let me explain uh, soft skill, which soft skill they could implement or improve. First of all, empathy. Sure. Uh, empathy. What's empathy? Well, it's being able to place yourself in the socks of others without really living what is he living, but sure. understanding. Yeah. So, you know, a, a, a great example is, you know, if, you, if you're living um, a very, very complex situation, you have some pain, um, you know, going to you and just, just listening to you, not, not rea reacting on what you're saying, but just listening deeply about what you're saying. Mm. And just being there. Yeah. Because it not only lasts a day, it's going to last a couple of weeks, months, who knows? Yeah. And you have to be, you always have to show for the, for the other person. Sure. Just showing up. Yeah. Just showing up is good. Yeah. Right? And then just listening or just being there sometimes, right? So empathy skill, the empathy is, is really critical. Then, of course, we have communication. You know, that's why I say the best way of selling is not selling. That's why I say the best way of communicating in 2019, um, the best way of building an authentic relationship is not what you think. Mm. A lot of people would say SMS, uh, text, yeah. um, Skype, sure. a face to face. Yeah. I would say, no, man, you just need to listen. Yeah. The key to communication has always been the same is listening. If you want to understand the need of a prospect or a customer, mm. you need to have deep listening sure. to understand what is problem, to ask open-end questions about his challenges, wow, yeah. 
right? Yeah. So you need to have um, a, a, a good way of communicate and the best way of it is first is listening and then asking relevant question about his problem. Sure. Of course, other skill that has to be mastered after you have communication, empathy, you would have self-control. Mm. It's a game changer. That's why yeah. people moving on in the hierarchy of an organization and some don't. Yeah. Not because of their skills, you know, their talent. No, it's because they're not able to control themselves, mm -hmm. you know. And control themselves, self-control has a lot to do with, you know, um, your, the self-awareness of your environment uh, to, be, uh, to be able to, you know, talk when need and, you know, reflect when needed, right? So self-control about your own emotion and everybody knows that we're better at self-control during the morning and very bad at night, uh, yeah, well. right? It's true. Uh, so being aware of it. And then after self-control, I would say that another that is very, very critical is also uh, the kindness, uh, treating people as people all the sure. time, right? Yeah. At all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these are critical insight, I would say that uh, foster a better emotional intelligence. Now, in the last talk, I remember when you when you talked to us as a whole, you mentioned uh, a little bit uh, about a skill that's kind of really lacking today, mm. and you see it. Uh, unfortunately, young people, older people as well, self discipline, mm. and just the the the, I guess the lack thereof, or what we can do to increase that. So, uh, share with us a little bit, because I I was actually uh, it really encouraged me because my dad was very. It was really instrumental in helping me be self-disciplined. Yeah. Like, and it, it remember, it helped me succeed in life yeah. because of just that skill. This is the most like underestimated skills yeah. in soft skills. Because I, I think if you don't have that self-discipline, you're not able to act in the sense of what you're saying. Self-discipline is everything at first. Mm. Self-discipline, when you reflect about it, when you think about it, it's the start of everything else. Because if you're not self-disciplined, you're not able to, to deliver action constantly. Yeah. And I really believe it all starts with self-love. What I mean by that is, if you want to take a greater care of your body, if you want to if you if you you eat healthier, yeah. healthier, well, you're gonna have to think about like, oh, junk food, not good for me. Sure. Uh, I know, you know, I love myself. I know it's not good for me, so I'm resisting, mm. right? So it all starts by self-loving you, learning that part. A lot of people say, yeah, of course I love myself. Well, think about it, reflect yeah. on it. Do yeah. you really? And then you're able to self-discipline you. And self-discipline is all about building small routine that you're able to scale. And here's the catch. A lot of people are too, uh, they, they, they're doing too much at first. You understand what I mean? Sure. So, you know, f since I can remember, I think 15 years old, I'm doing these 30 push up. I never quit them sure. two decades later, yeah. right? And it's, it's part of me. It's really part of me. And then, my whole journey spread out with these self-discipline because if I'm saying something to you, you can be sure I'm gonna do it, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it, I, my voice has a value, right? So self-discipline is having a routine, that kind of routine that, you know, that is, you, you need to do something about it. Like if 30 push-up is, it, it, it could be easy the first 10 days, sure. but if you're able to constantly doing it, fine it's a bit like the gym right a lot of people enroll in the gym the first of january and then one month later there's nobody else yeah, yeah? yeah. why yeah. because they do too much at first they're doing two hours they're excited they have all that all these hype but you know what they should do is a bit like one day i coached someone and it made me learn something interesting he was willing to to lose like 200 pounds. I was like, oh my God, that's a lot, man. That's a challenge. You, you sure you want me to help on that? Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, I'll give you five, five coaching sessions. We would talk for an hour. I would say, you know, the essence of building a routine is, a, is actually building that minimum uh, routine yeah. that you could scale. So he was like, okay. So I say, just do five minutes at the gym. Find a cool gym that you're comfortable in it. And, you know, make sure you schedule it because one of the biggest part of, you know, self-discipline yourself is schedule the thing you're going to do. Yeah. 
if you don't schedule, you won't do it, sure. right? So he was like a guy that would wake up very early. So he would do that routine at 5.30 a.m. So what he would do, and I told him, just do five minutes. Yeah. But after a couple of weeks, I was like, my God, he doesn't, I mean, he, I, he, he, he gained some weight. So I was like, there's a problem. I, I was like, Robert, there's a, there's a problem. Tell me the <laughs> truth. He says, I promise you, I did what you said, but, he says, but, after the first day, I saw that muscle up guy just beside me and I was like, oh my God, I quit. And he quit and then he reflect the old day and he says, I remember what Benoit says. And you know, my limit was just going to the gym. So what he would do for the next couple of weeks was just creating a routine of going to the gym, <laughs> not training. <laughs> to be really honest, yeah. I, I, I should have been the one who pay him because oh. he made me learn something that you need to respect where you at. You know, just the fact of waking up, taking his bag, getting into his car, getting to the gym and getting back home was something for him. Yeah. And he built that for a couple of weeks and then he started going to the gym training. Yeah. A bit like if you'd like to read more books, sure. the same. Don't start reading like crazy. I love people reading like crazy and then they don't read. You know, I read 30 minutes a day for the last 10, 10 years, I think. Yeah. And the fact is, I start very, 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 like, tiny bit. Sure. Like, I would just basically, at first, you know what I would do for the first 30 days? I would just open the book at the same time. I'm yeah. a late, you know, I sleep late. Sure. So I would, I would schedule it at, I don't know, 8.30, whatever, yeah. at a spot where I, f I felt comfortable at home. And I would just open the book at yeah. that. 8 30 and then close it yeah. that's it case closed sure. but then constantly doing it was part of me yeah and then absolutely. i'm able to scale it that's true you need to learn how how your your your, your body's working and this and that. so self-discipline will self-discipline everything and i learned from self-discipline something very interesting as much as you're going to self-discipline yourself the more you're going to be uh, actually able to do more. Mm. The more you do, the more you do. Yeah. And the less you're going to do, the less you're going to yeah. do because you're not self-disciplined. Sure. Now, what, what spawns the, the motivation? Because, mm. you know, the discipline is one thing, but you have to have a, not the how, or, but, but the, the reason and the mm. why, right? The big why, the self, right? self-motivation. Well, how yeah, do, how yeah. do you get that? Self-motivation is one of the critical skills to master. Um, so a lot of people at work and, you know, probably in the people that are listening to the, the, the show right now, I'm sure they're like, oh man, in, in my company, there's some people that love their job and some hate. Yeah. Some are motivated, some are not. Yeah. And I'm like, no, man, motivation is universal. Everybody's motivation is motivated, but they're motivated about something different. Yeah. Some people are positively motivated and some are in, in that negative side. So let me explain. Uh, negatively means like you're you're motivated by uh, e by your ego mm -hmm. or or by rewards, you know, because you get a salary. That's why you're there. I don't think it's your case. Let's take <laughs> yeah. the podcast example, sure, right? Yeah. You're passionate about it, yeah. So it reach it, it reach out your purpose, and at the same time you have fun doing it. Yeah. If you combine both, you create amazing stuff you don't see time you're in a state of flow right yeah, so motivation has two sides when you reach that positive side it's because you understand your purpose the reason why you're doing it sometimes just that purpose is enough but then if you combine it with joy fun yeah. it's just amazing it's on the other side you're there in some meeting because others are there so you need to show up yeah. so you're, you're you're building a greater ego which is very bad you're not there for the good reason. Um, you're working because you get it paid, yeah. right? You're in the negative side and you know, you, you don't get really productive. You, you, your productivity level is very bad. Uh, you get burnout out and this and that. On the other side, um, you're creating amazing company. Sure. So three key element to master, three key element, three key ingredient to make sure um, that your company is uh, infused. Okay. First thing is every, everybody's seeking for autonomy. Mm. Please have a vision and make sure your people have option. 
I have choice. Let them decide some stuff. Mm. First thing, empower them, right? Yeah. Autonomy. The second one to create that motivation that is positive, the second one is really about uh, affiliation, connecting. So, you know, instead of doing these long meetings, what about doing these one-to-one -one coaching sessions with your leader every week? You know, everybody wants to have a time with his leader talking for 15, 20 minutes, connecting. Mm -hmm. What about these things? It's actually more efficient and it self-motivates your people. So having that affiliation connection with people, a deep connection, very important. And thirdly, I would say that it's very important that people see that they're progressing, they're growing mm. as a person yeah. and in the company, that the company has a plan, you know, for that person, that give that person a better, a greater purpose. Yeah. Now, you talked a little bit about um, self-love, you know, the thing that motivates, uh, you know, uh, uh, years back, I, uh, I had like a wake-up call myself, yeah. you know, where I realized uh, I need to lose some weight and uh, eat healthier and make some wise yeah. decisions. And you know, you know, you can have somebody encourage you or challenge you or tell you that you're yeah. fat or whatever, you know? Yeah. But these things weren't motivating enough. But what I did is I looked at three pairs of little eyes oh, that, wow. that saw their dad. And I said, you know, I want to be healthy for them. You know, because they need a dad that can pick them up and I need, a, I, I need a, a, a dad that can walk the, my daughter down the aisle one yeah. day and not be in a wheelchair, you know? And it's, it's one of those things that it challenges you, but it requires a bit of self-love because yeah. you know you. I know by nature you're a giver and yeah. you like to give to people, but sometimes we have to give to ourselves, right? And take care of ourselves. But but that takes um, one of the terms you use, and I want you to talk about was mm. self-awareness. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, to be aware of your needs and everything. So yeah. can you can you talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that that was helpful for me when you. Yeah, yeah, about but you mentioned something very important. Before giving to others, you need to give to yourself. Yeah. That's why I say before loving others, you need to love yourself. You're, you won't be able to love anybody if you're not loving yourself. Mm. Seriously. Sure. And that's why I'm a big, I give a lot. Yeah. But I give a lot to me. I did give a lot to me before. Yeah. I was able to engage in giving to others. That's true. You cannot give if you have nothing. Sure, exactly. You understand what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So to bounce back on that, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the way, if you'd like to improve your soft skills, very easy, is self-awareness. Self-awareness is like, there's a, so many exercises you can do, but one of the classic cliche exercises you can do is with your loved one or with your brother, sister, or someone that really know you, ask that person to point it out or to write down on a piece of paper your top three uh, strength and your top three weaknesses. Mm. And then do exactly the same without talking to that person on yourself. Mm. And then compare the result. Sometimes we're going to be very surprised. Yeah. And if you could do it right now, it, 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 and it's in sync, but in six months' time, it could be out of sync. Mm. Because, you know, we move on. Sure. Our value move on. So, and ask questions as well about, like, what's your value? Don't say integrity. Yeah. Go deeper. Go yeah, yeah. deeper. What does that mean for you? Sure. What are your value? Because if you're able to understand that, I have a great example for you. One of my great friends is a CEO of multiple multinational company. And, you know, throughout his 20 years career, he's always been a CEO. And one day I asked that question to that guy. He was, I was like, is there any, any, any situation that happened to you where you were not happy at all? And he was like, he answered back right away. He says, yes, of course. When I was the CEO of Philip Morris Africa, I was like, why? He says, because I was selling cigarettes. Yeah. I just say the, I just actually see and focus on the paycheck. After two, three months, I quit. I was like, why? He says, it, it was not really matching my value. I was lobbying, pretending that cigarette doesn't kill, but it does, mm. right? So what is your belief, strong belief, yeah. and, and your value? Make sure to do this exercise again and again. You know, I have a, a whiteboard at home yeah. and I write down where I see myself in five times. I talked about having a sure, vision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, what are my beliefs and vision? And you know what? It can change sure. because we meet some people, yeah. right? And then you move on. You improve yourself or you try. So that's one thing of self-awareness. Mm. And then because you're getting more self-aware of who you are, you're getting to the second part, which is social awareness. Mm. 
social awareness is critical uh, to sell without selling, yeah. to, to, to have a, a, a better view on the world. Social awareness is being able to adapt yourself to people at all time. Yeah. You know, from, uh, from someone to another, you may have, for instance, with your CEO, 20 seconds to explain your plan. Uh, to, to explain your point, yeah. where with you, I may have three minutes and I'm having a one minute where it's just cozy talk. Sure. Yeah, right? Yeah. But in some place, it, with people that focusing on result, straight to the point. And then people that love relations, you need to build that relationship first, right? Yeah, yeah. And you need to be able to adapt right away. Yeah. So how? How to improve your social awareness? Two key ingredients. First, observe more. Mm. You know? Be master of observation of your surrounding all the time. And then second, listen deeper, right? And just to bounce back on social awareness, have a great example. Yeah. One guy was a great leader, but he says, I think I lack of social awareness. And I actually agree with him. Hmm. And here's the example. We would sat down every Saturday morning, morning at 8 a.m., having that talk for an hour. Hmm. And I would explain how to, you know, being more social aware of your surrounding and this and that. And after eight weeks, I talk, I, I was like, have you noticed anything? We, you know, we've been sitting at the same time at the same coffee shop each Saturday for the <laughs> last eight weeks. Well. And he was like, well, the coffee is great. I was like, no, have you noticed anything? He says, no. I said, are you kidding me? He says, no, what's going on? He says, you don't see that whole couple just next to us? Mm. They sat down at eight as we sat down each Saturday and they would re read their newspaper without talking to each other. And at 8.30, just halfway into our discussion, they would go, mm. right? And since the beginning, not only I noticed that, but I noticed that the guy was a big fan of Barcelona. I had that oh, okay. hat. And I, you know, being more social aware and you could practice yourself is noticing the small details, right? Yeah, sure. That not only you have a notebook, but you have a devolution notebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's very different. Sure. And as he understood that, he become better at it, mm. observing more. And then you could, you could have better discussion because you could link pretty much everything with it. And you could, have, you could be better adapting yourself. Sometimes these are hard for us to do because we get like set in our ways, right? Yeah. Like we're, we, we, are, we get to comfortable with the way we are. So um, I know in, in, in your book actually that you, you help uh, co-wrote, yeah. uh, you, I know you, you mentioned even you talked about your comfort zone, like stepping yeah. out of mm. your comfort zone. And um, that's a huge key ingredient, right? So yeah. talk to us a little bit about, about stepping out of your comfort zone and why, why we need to do this. Yeah, I think once you understand, you know, what, what soft skills and what are the skills to improve and then your social awareness, your self-awareness, how it works, how can you improve it, then to push yourself to another level, uh, to master your soft skills constantly, uh, you need to be obsess about like stepping outside of your comfort zone, comfort zone um, you know, enjoying uh, true adversity because uh, it's really where you improve yourself. It's where you discover hidden talent. This is where you, you, you're going to find opportunity. This is where uh, you're going to fail for sure, but you're going to for sure learn as well. Uh, and this is where you push yourself to have a better vision uh, of something or of a context. And this is where also you, uh, you develop a better network. This is also where uh, you expand your, your knowledge. This is also where you expand your, your brain. This is also yeah. where uh, you have a better vision. Wow. That's, that, that's a game changer, actually. And then it become um, an, everyday, an everyday thing. Actually, it's becoming your comfort zone. Do you understand yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's a new comfort uh, zone. So, so yeah, like for me... Um, Talking to a stranger uh, in the metro or in the elevator is just normal. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I don't know, trying always new thing or anything that may gonna challenge me uh, is gonna make me a better person. And I know that traveling, yeah. traveling, being exposed, taking the, I don't know, the commute of local yeah. uh, helped me 
to have a better understanding. Talking to stranger, uh, talking to, to people on, in the cab, the driver yeah. in the cab, and learning from their story uh, from the city and so on. So always trying to um, step outside of a comfort zone, yeah. That's so true. Uh, I know that you're kind of kind of person that likes to pay things forward to yeah. um, in pay and kindness. You yeah. Know? So um, how can um, generosity, kindness, and these type of things, just like these very human mm. skills, be used uh, in, in our in our work environment and with with people? Because a lot of times we get we can get self absorbed, right? Yeah. For and sure. uh, so you're working on your soft skills. You're trying to be self aware. Trying to do the yeah. self love, but now. You know, to step out of your comfort zone, sometimes you have to sh go an extra step, right? So yeah. Talk a little bit about that. that. that that's, well, so, I, actually, I really believe that kindness, I attract kindness. Yeah. Generosity attract generosity, speci especially if uh, you're generous with people that don't seek for your generosity, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. This is very important. And, of course, uh, it's just a, a, a simple act that, for sure, first and foremost it's going to help you because try that at home i mean if you i always give a coffee to the person next to me on a monday sure that's my you know not every day but when i feel like it but more importantly every monday yeah like and i do that for me first when you give there's and uh, scientifically it's proved yeah. that um, you secrete some sort of hormone yeah. um, and, and and you you get happier for some reason Sure. The more you give, the more you're happy. That's very interesting. And then the more you give, the more you're going to find opportunity for yourself. Yeah. I don't know how to explain that, but it's true. And kindness, seek for kindness. And here is a key fact. If, you, if you're generous, if you show some altruism, because you expect something in return, it will never happen. Mm. It just has to be because you feel like it. But the more you're going to do it, you're going to see a pattern that you'll be happier and happier. And it's not about money. It's about, it's about the gesture. Sometimes it's just holding the door. Mm. You know, sometimes it's, oh my God, you have a beautiful dress. Yeah. You have beautiful eyes. Yeah. Kindness is everywhere at all time. And you know, you never know who you deal with. Yeah. And sometimes you could be kind because he's the CEO and not kind because he's, I don't know, some random janitor, whatever. Yeah. But who knows, man, who's going to be, who is going to be. And, you know, kindness is just, it has to be everywhere. Sure. Uh, it's a bit like, are you treating people as people all the time, yeah. right? I'm sure everybody in this, uh, that listened to us, uh, have done this. I've done it. I I'm sure you did. You know, you're in the elevator, you see people running to catch the elevator and you, you pretend you don't see it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. Kindness is everywhere and you just need, with your social awareness, to be sure that you are, you're always kind with people. So let me give you an, an example. I always take the metro to get to my work, right? Yeah. And there's that whole guy give newspaper. I don't. I hate newspaper. I yeah. never read newspaper, but I know his name, yeah. Justin. Yeah. And you know, we have that two minute discussion every single morning. Sure. Comment ça va, Justin? Are you doing Justin? Yeah. yeah. Fine. Fine. How's your grandchild? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. Ah, that's cool. And then I move on. I treat him as a people. And sure. nobody, but I say nobody speak to him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like the security guard at my work. Mm. Hey, how you doing, boss? Yeah. Good, man. And you know, we have a connection. Sure. And it, the more you're gonna practice, the more your surrounding will seem like people. Mm. And the more you'll you'll do that naturally. Absolutely. It's a bit like everything we, we've been talking. The more you do it constantly, and the more it's part of you. It, it's no longer it, it's an habit, but part of you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. It becomes your new comfort zone. Yeah, and it, we're, yeah, that's amazing. Um, is there anything else? I, we have a lot of. Uh, we got some young people listening to us that are kind of. You know, the world is moving so fast, yeah. especially technology, right? Yeah. Every six months, everything doubles. For sure. Right? But um, you know, so I think some of these soft skills are fantastic for them to grasp onto. Is there any other words of wisdom that you would try to encourage, like the next generation, or maybe somebody that? somebody that's stuck in the rut, they've been doing the same job mm -hmm. and they're, they don't feel motivated, they're lacking it. What, what would be something you could encourage them with? Well, first of all, I was always attracted to the outlier in the room. So if I would have 100 person and there's, they're all age 20 to 25, 
white, whatever, I would be attracted to that, I don't know, 60 years old Japanese, yeah. if, if there's one, whatever. Yeah, sure, sure. Because, of course, it's easy to go to people that seems like us. Yeah. But usually we don't learn much. No. And, and we don't have too much takeaway. We just, we're comfortable. Uh, so, so, yeah, I would always push myself to see people that are different and to talk to them and learn more about them. So I think the audacity of uh, going uh, with people that are different from you is one key ingredient. I would say also to be a constant learner. Mm. Uh, and, and what I realize is the more I read book, yeah. uh, the more I learn uh, from podcasts yeah. uh, and interview and all, the more I, I realize that I don't know much. Sure. And the more I'm open mind. And the more I actually understand that there is not such, I mean, there's not such thing as not reading or as not knowing uh, because there's so many things to know. And you're yeah. willing to take, at, uh, you know, you're willing to, to, uh, to challenge obvious thing because you think that, you, you know that it may be obvious, but not so, so much anymore, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. So constant learner, um, being curious about others. Sure. Being curious about others and asking questions. A lot of people pretend that uh, talking, uh, the person that talk controlling mm. um, the discussion, but no, when you ask question, you are the one who controlling the discussion. And also, especially if you do open, open hand question, yeah. and also, not only you're controlling the discussion, but you do the whole, you, you're doing the, the learning, yeah. right? Absolutely. You're learning everything. You get so much knowledge. Yeah. You're absorbed by knowledge, right? Sure. So I, w I would just be attracted to people, uh, step outside of your comfort zone, especially at a young age. I, I would say from 20 to 30, we, we should try as much as we can of things, yeah. you know, develop more skills, yeah. uh, multiple skills. And, you know, my biggest passion was soccer, was sport. Yeah. But then I discovered a bigger passion, which was a speaker. Yeah. You know, I think an impact. Sure. That match my purpose and also um, my pleasure. Yeah, right? absolutely. So that's fantastic. Well, man, I think we've covered. You give yeah. a whole great talk right yeah. now about all the things that we do. And now, if um, if people are more interested in developing some of these things, where where's the best place that they can get in touch with you? Yeah, and that's find out good. more about. It? Yeah, well, on LinkedIn for sure. Okay. I have a great platform on LinkedIn. By the way, LinkedIn is a powerful platform today. Sure. Um, you could have a great impact, but once again, just to bounce back, people uh, use LinkedIn to promote themselves. Yeah. Don't use it for that. Use it to evangelize, may learn people from your content. Yeah. So yeah, uh, on LinkedIn for sure, and they could contact me personally. Yeah. I always answer back. Uh, thank you, by the way. It was a, a blast having that interview with you. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for coming in the studio with us. And I uh, really appreciate it. So uh, if you want to get in contact with them, make sure you, you, you find them on LinkedIn. And if you like this video, uh, be sure to comment as well. And uh, if there's any comments that are directed toward uh, Benoit, I'll send it over to him and I'm sure he'll answer. Thanks. And uh, thank you guys so much. So make sure you like and you subscribe. And if you're listening to our audio podcast, and go ahead and heart or share it and whatever you got to do, <laughs> click those buttons. Yeah it'll, yeah, it'll be great and share this with your friends. But uh, anyway, thank you once again, Benoit. I Thanks. really appreciate you coming in and sharing a little bit about your heart and your soul, your passion Thanks. with us. And I think it'll be an encouragement to uh, those watching and listening right now. So thanks again, Benoit. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. It's a pleasure. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank Ciao. you guys for watching. Bye.